Today we're talking about the changes I love about watchOS 6, which I have the beta running on my Apple Watch. And I'm starting to feel lucky because I found out a ton of people tried to put watchOS 6 on their Apple Watch before they updated their iPhones to iOS 13, which could result in bricking your watch. So really heavily consider what you're doing before you install watchOS 6, though today's video is not a tutorial on that. In fact, I would just suggest not installing watchOS 6 until the public beta for iOS 13 is ready because I've heard so many people have bricked their Apple Watches already ready because they thought they could just install the profile on the phone and boom, now their watch is useless. So I would just say avoid it entirely. But there's a lot of good watchOS 6 additions that I don't think they talked much about on stage four. So that's what we'll be going into today. Let's begin. So first off, there are of course the new watch faces, which honestly I found a little bit disappointing. I guess I'm not sure what I was expecting, but they seem kind of basic. The new ones that came out are just like slightly rearranged complications and not much else. For some of you, this may have been exactly what you were looking for, but for me, I was still kind of hoping for an adaptive watch face that would adjust and complications could get bigger or smaller depending on what kind of information you wanted throughout the day or complications that could adjust depending on what was most relevant at that time time analyzing what information is changing. Like if your battery's at 100%, maybe you don't need the 100% widget. Or if there's new recently published news articles, those will appear. But if the stock market changes, it'll cut to that. I don't know, just something a bit more adaptive, but I'm not a software engineer. I don't know how possible that is. So I'm not gonna really complain too much about it given I don't even know how to do what I want. I don't even know what I want, but regardless, there's new watch faces that some of you may appreciate and enjoy. However, the one thing they didn't talk enough about on stage was the redesigned Now Playing app which before, Now Playing was not an app you could access from the home screen. It was getting kind of confusing. When you'd play something on your phone, you would get the Now Playing widget on your old Apple Watch, but then you could go back and select your Apple Watch if you wanted the AirPlay stuff directly off the watch and not the phone. And the Now Playing app wasn't really something you could access from the home screen. Now it has a new icon and they've redesigned it to be a lot more functional. So the Apple Watch Now Playing splash screen has changed drastically from the original watchOS up till now. And I think the one they've just announced makes the most amount of sense. So the volume indicator has been moved to be right next to the digital crown. So kind of like the volume indicator on iOS, it's off to the side, it's out of the way. It's not intrusive enough to be annoying, but it's present enough so that you can still tell when your volume is low, when it's high. And they've used this volume indicator before in different parts of the Apple Watch app. So it's not exactly new, but I guess I've been wondering for the longest time, why didn't they apply this to the Apple Watch before? Also, as you can see on that little play pause button in the center while you're listening to music, it looks like there's a little loading bar going around the play and pause. That is actually the time head for the song you're listening to. So when you're halfway through listening to your song, then the song will be halfway through that little circle, which I think is a great indication of data that we previously didn't have before. You don't know how much left is in the song. Now you do, thanks to that very simple inclusion. And of course, fast forwarding through the song, you can tell what part of it you're in. And that allows for more space at the bottom. For those of you who know how the old style now playing tab was, they usually had a little volume circle at the bottom, which was taking up space, which meant adding the song, loving the song, disliking the song, or changing the shuffle in loop options was a lot more complicated. And now they've simplified it heavily so that it's all just in the three buttons at the bottom there. You can decide if you wanna shuffle the music, loop the album, or loop that individual song, plus change what the music is coming out of. So if you wanted to start air playing out of your HomePod or your AirPods instead of what it's coming out of currently, which in most cases could be your phone or your car stereo, having all of that control built into the Now Playing app, it makes the most amount of sense that it's ever had before. And a lot of the features they talked about at the event were cool, but not something we'd use a lot. But the Now Playing widget is something I use constantly with my Apple Watch. So the fact that they've updated it, I think should be mentioned. I have used the Loud Environment app a few times, and I gotta say, this is one of those health features they add that I'm kind of like, eh, you're reaching a little bit here. It's kind of like the Breathe app. I'm sure some of you may use that, and it could be very helpful for a lot of you that at certain times in the day you want to relax. So having that Apple Watch to help you breathe calmly and focus on deep breaths is probably good, but I haven't found a lot of use cases for it and I don't ever use it anymore. Probably when it first came out, I tried it a few times, but yeah, now I have no case where I need that. And I'm kind of the same with the loud environment. I'm usually working at home, but my car doesn't have air conditioning right now. And I oftentimes leave the windows rolled down to let cool air in. And that usually means my arm with my Apple Watch attached to it is hanging out my car window. And anytime 
time I do that, now I get the notification that this is a loud environment you're in. Be careful, it's very noisy. It's like, well, yeah, you are. You're a microphone that's being blown by 40 mile an hour winds. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty loud to the microphone. So I usually end up just muting it after that. I feel like it's a feature that may be useful for people who go to concerts a lot or are listening to loud music in a sound class or a band class or something like that. But for someone like me who's working here at my desk a lot of the day, yeah, it's not terribly helpful. Now they've also added the App Store to the Apple Watch as well, which is kind of interesting that they're able to demo so many third-party apps now directly from the Apple Watch App Store. And given it's still in beta, it has a surprising number of third-party apps available that you can just buy or download straight off the watch. You don't need the iPhone companion app, though I've kind of found in my experience that third-party apps have very little use on the Apple Watch. Most 99% of the apps I use on my Apple Watch are the native first-party ones anyway. If you guys know of any good third-party Apple Watch apps that you use regularly, apart from Facebook Messenger, I guess, then definitely be sure to let me know because I can't find many that are terribly useful. Though I do find it funny that the App Store and the Apple Watch, its front banner, I guess you could call it, is advertising that you can listen on the go with Pandora. There's a shockingly low amount of marketing for the Spotify Apple Watch app, which does exist, but you know, Apple's not happy with them because they're their competitor. But I guess Pandora isn't, even though they're kind of in the same department, they're just not worried about Pandora, so they're okay with advertising them. I don't know, this is a little bit of a sidetrack. I'm glad they've finally added the calculator to the Apple Watch app. No, they haven't added the calculator to the iPad. Still confused by that, but if you wanted a tip calculator, having the built-in calculator app is so much better now, especially when you notice you start looking for Apple Watch apps on the Watch OS store, plus with the iPad OS, they wanna put ads in there and they wanna make you pay for it, which is very annoying. So I'm very grateful that Apple finally just added a first-party calculator app, which calculating a tip after dinner is so much easier than before. And the buttons are quite tiny, and I can only imagine how much worse the calculator is on the smaller Apple Watches, like if someone out there has a 38 millimeter Series 3 or below, that's gonna be a lot of buttons on that tiny screen because I have the 44 millimeter Series 4, which is the biggest Apple Watch screen you can get, and I still find the buttons kind of small. So if anyone out there is running Watch OS 6 on their 38 millimeter watch, let me know how that goes because I feel like maybe they should move some of the plus minus multiplication tools that they have on the Apple Watch into a force touch where you have to push hard to activate those because that might get quite tricky pretty quickly. While they did add the Find My app to iOS 13 and iPad OS, I find it funny that they just now added Find My Friends to Watch OS as well, alongside audiobooks. So if you wanna listen to audiobooks without your iPhone while you're jogging or running, you can now do that as well. And by far my favorite feature, the best feature they've added to Watch OS 6 that I'm super, super excited about is menstrual tracking. I'm gonna get a ton of use out of that. The other small change though that they didn't talk about but I think is still worth mentioning is they've updated the Apple Watch charging animation. So when you drop it on a charger, the icon blows up to the entire screen now and then goes back to charging, which is slightly different than it was before. I know it's not a drastic change, but I noticed it when I put it on its charger and it's something that you'll be able to appreciate once it's available to everyone else. Other small details is when you're having a phone call, you now have a new splash animation with Watch OS 6 that allows you to take the phone call off of your iPhone and bring it to the Apple Watch if you wanna leave your phone behind for some reason but keep your phone call going. They now have that option if you've already started your phone call on iOS 13. I just discovered that this morning while recording the Taylor's of Tech podcast. Next episode coming very, very soon. And that pretty much sums up all of the most noticeable and major changes that we got with watchOS 6. Obviously, a wearable cannot have as many massive changes as iOS 13 or iPadOS can, but given they're working with such a tiny display and such little screen real estate, they have to be creative in the fact that they're still able to make fairly substantial upgrades year over year is quite impressive to me. What they're gonna do for watchOS 7, I still have no idea. The one request I always have every single year and they still haven't done is the ability to switch between your cards when using Apple Pay via the digital crown. I love the fact that you can switch between watch faces by scrolling with the digital crown. That saves a lot more time. If they just brought that to the Apple Pay cards that pop up when you double click the side button. Seriously, if you guys just added that, it would be the perfect operating system. Literally, my only request with watchOS. That's it. Everything else is perfectly fine. Sorry for all of you who are hoping for always on displays. I guess they're not doing it this year. Maybe the Series 5 will have a better battery and they can incorporate it in there. We'll see, but I highly doubt it. I think Apple likes having their displays go all the way off. But maybe you guys can jailbreak your Apple Watch. No, don't. Stop. Just don't do that. Please don't make... Oh, God. I know someone's gonna try it now. Anyways, to those of you who are looking forward to watchOS 6 or already have watchOS 6, let me know what you're thinking about it. I 
following me over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Shape here, and I will see you in the next one.